cannot understand, ladies and gentlemen, about grace is that to talk about grace, it cannot be fully um, explained or the subject cannot be exhausted in one sermon, mm -hmm. which is why pastor has been teaching it in a series. And today, in his absence, he wanted to retain the continuity of what he's been teaching. And he asked me if I would share it and, and asked me to share from the subject, how do I get grace? Somebody say that with me. How, how do, I do I get grace? Get grace. Now, I promise y'all gonna go to some scriptures. I, like I said, I'm doing it a little bit differently this morning. Normally we take a text and then we, but I, I promise you we don't get there. But ladies and gentlemen, the question of how do I get grace? Say that again. How, how do, I do I get grace? Get grace. Hmm. Now, when I first heard the subject, you know, my first response was, I don't have an answer to that question. And here's the reason why. Because by all rights and purposes, one of the first primary uh, concepts of the message of grace is that grace is God's unmerited yes. favor. That's right. That's Are y'all right. with me this morning? Oh, yes. Yes. Grace is known to be God's unmerited favor. So the reason why I struggled to the con with the concept of how do I get grace because of the fact that if it's unmerited, it means I can't earn it. That's right. It means I can't necessarily do anything to earn grace. So then I begin to think like, well, if that's the case, then I can't do anything to get grace. Until, until I was laying in my bed this week and the Holy Ghost spoke to me. He said, son, I want you to think about this for a minute. And he started talking. And I love, the, here again, I love the word of God. Amen. Because you can go to 1 Peter chapter number 5. 1 Peter chapter number 5 is where I'm going to start. Uh, 1 Peter chapter number 5. <laughs> verse number 5 and number 6. 1 Peter chapter 5, verse 5 and 6. Says these words, likewise, you younger people, submit yourselves to the elders. Yes, all of you submit to one another and be clothed with humility. For God resists the proud, yeah. but He gives grace to the humble. Let me read that again. It says, For God resists the proud, right. but he gives what, what's that next word? Grace. Grace. Isn't that what we've been talking about? Grace. grace. He resists the proud, but he gives grace to the who? The humble. So now how in the world am I going to get grace? Ah, the book says I got to be humble. Now, when he said this to me, now I'm the guy who has to go prepare scripture to scripture and make sure I'm getting the concept right, make sure I got it. Well, I began to think about, first thing I thought about, it's the Bible says, by grace are you saved. Hallelujah. Hello. Hallelujah. Right. Did, did anybody read that in the book? They say, by grace we are saved through faith, not by our works, lest any man should boast. There's nothing you can do to get grace. Grace, watch this. Grace was already available to you from day one. Hallelujah. Woo, hallelujah. I, I wish I had about three people that would get with me right there. I said grace was available to you yeah. from day one. So now when we ask the question, how do I get grace? I couldn't do anything to warrant or to earn the grace. But ladies and gentlemen, let me switch the word get into receive. All right. Woo! Receive. How do I receive the grace? The grace that brought me into salvation required me to humble myself. Yeah. Lord, help me in here. I said it required me to humble myself. How did it require me to humble myself? Because I had to sit there and acknowledge that I was a sinner. Yes, 
See, we live, in a, we live in a generation now, ladies and gentlemen, nobody wants to acknowledge that they're a sinner. Everybody wants to think they're a good person. Yeah. Let them tell it, everybody's a good person. But I'm sorry, ladies and gentlemen, no matter how much good you do, the Bible still declares that my righteousness, my on my best day, my good deeds are still like filthy rags. That's right. That's right. No matter what I do. Hey, glory. But guess what? If I if, no matter what I do, I couldn't, I, I mean, I couldn't merit God's grace. Guess what happened? His grace was sitting there waiting on me to say, you know what, God? I am a sinner. I had to humble myself to say I'm a sinner. But the second thing I had to humble myself and say is I can't save myself. Yeah. Is there anybody in here that came to that same knowledge that you had to identify? I couldn't save myself if I tried. Couldn't do it. I couldn't rescue myself from hell if I tried. I don't have time to go back into the Old Testament history of that day where they had to have the blood of rams and bullets to cover them every year. Now here's where I get my shot right here. It's the fact that the blood of the rams and the bullets could cover their sins, but what can wash away my sin? Nothing but the blood of Jesus. See, I told y'all it would happen. I told y'all I'd be a little loud. Because I'd be happy about the work. The blood didn't just cover my sin. The blood washed them away. Anybody else glad like I am that the blood washed your sins away? Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. So now I had to humble myself to acknowledge that I was a sinner. I had to humble myself. To acknowledge that I couldn't save myself. I had to humble myself to depend on the power of the cross to redeem me. Yes. Hello, somebody. I had to humble myself to depend on the power of the cross as my redemption and my justification. Yes. Yes. Well, and it all happened more than 2,000 years ago. Mm -hmm. So it takes some humility. Under the hand of God to even accept that what happened over 2,000 years ago was for me yeah. right you. now. Thank you. Hallelujah. Thank you. It happened over 2,000 years ago, Elder. But it was for me right now. So that made me realize that I was in the right vein. Because if I'm going to get grace, if I'm going to receive the grace, then guess what? I have to humble myself. But let, let, let's go a little further. Because now, ladies and gentlemen, I started looking at another thing. You know, we, we know that grace is God's unmerited favor, right? Yes, yes, yes. Can I tell you another thing that, God, that God's grace is? Yes. It's the supernatural enabling power that causes you to do what other people can't do. Oh, God. I said it's a supernatural enabling power that causes you to be able to do easily what other people can't do at all. I'm not just talking about your regular skill, ladies and gentlemen. I'm not talking about your regular ability. I'm talking about when God puts his hand on you, gives you special grace to do things that other people can't do. Yeah. The Bible says that Paul was, he was talking, I believe around 1 Corinthians, he was talking and he starts giving them, you know, they were all bragging about all these other apostles and all these other preachers, you know. They were talking about all the, all, all, all the big names. And Paul said, you know, I really would rather not boast. He said, but give me a minute, let me just talk about what I've been through. He said, let me talk about what I've been through. And he began to testify about how five times he had been beaten. 39 times. He talked about how, now see, some of y'all can't even handle what you talked about. I can't hear a talk back church right there. You can't even handle it, they talk about you. You can't even handle it, they scandalize your name. You can't even handle it, somebody doesn't, doesn't click like on your Facebook page. I thought my post was good. They should 
should have liked my post, and they went and liked somebody else's post, and now you're mad. <laughs> Lord, have mercy. So we get caught up in that kind of stuff. But now Paul says, ladies and gentlemen, he says, understand, I have been to hell and back, so to speak. Good God of life. And what I have been through, you know, some of us can testify that some of the things that we have been through, if anybody else had had to go through it, they might not have survived it. They might have lost their mind. They might have gone crazy. Look at you still sitting here in your right mind. Haven't gone crazy. Haven't lost your mind. Somebody ought to give God praise that it was grace that held you together. Grace held me together. When I was right at the birth of driving off the bridge, ready to commit suicide, I'm telling y'all real stuff. I'm not talking about what I heard. I remember a day in my life I wanted to drive off the bridge and die. But grace! He says to Paul, he 
says, yeah, you asked me three times to remove the thing, but my prayer. Hey. Oh, yeah, y'all talking now. I said, my prayer is sufficient for thee. Now, here's what I shout right here, because it gave me the understanding. Another definition of grace is the supernatural enabling power of God that makes you victorious. Difficult, ladies and gentlemen, to process the 
I did. Well, God, why did you heal that one, but you didn't heal this one? Yeah, you know. Mercy. And can I be honest? I don't have the answer because I'm not God. All right. All right. All right. But here, here's what I found out. Grace gives you the supernatural. It is the supernatural enabling power that gives you victory, right? Yeah, that's right. But if it doesn't pull you out of the fire, come here, Hebrew boys. <laughs> if grace doesn't pull you out of the fire, grace also gives you the ability to endure the fire and go through it. Go out here and talk back, sir. I said, if you tap into grace, you'll have the supernatural ability to go through the fire. Don't try to get out of the fire. Let God do it for you in the fire. Hallelujah. So, he makes you an overcomer. He gives you the power to endure. Yes. So, how did it happen? Because I had to humble myself Amen. under the mighty hand of God. Notice what Paul did in his moment of trial. He had to humble himself. That's right. See, I, I got it now. I got it. How do I get grace? How do I receive grace? I gotta humble myself. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Many of you think you can do it by yourself, but I come to tell you, you can't do it by yourself. I come to tell you, there's no way you can handle it on your own. But ladies and gentlemen, if you would just humble yourself, when you humble yourself, God will shift your life. I'm closing. I've heard many of you sometimes say, God, humble me. I promise you, you don't want to ask God to humble you. Because when you ask God to humble you, God knows how to strip you down to your lowest common denominator. Oh! I'm sorry, that's how I preach sometimes. Home, but oh!
five-year-old the keys to my car out there. Mm. A five-year-old can't, I can't give them the keys. That's right. So if they ask me to let them drive on the road, even a 10-year-old, their feet might be able to reach the pedals and they can see over the steering wheel. But I still have to tell them, no. Because they're not ready yet. Some of you have been, fr I hear God talking in my ear right now. Right. Some of you have been frustrated. All right. Mercy. You've been frustrated because God's answering some stuff in your life has been no. But if the truth be told, his no was actually not yet. Not yet. Oh. Wait, wait, wait. I need my wait. Wait. Yes. Praise God. Wait. I said it looked like the answer, the answer was no for right now. But what he was really saying was, not yet. Not yet. How many know when you were younger, you wanted to drive the car before you were old enough to drive the car? Let me see your hand. You wanted to drive. <laughs> yes. Some of your parents said you do it, but then other parents said, no. But no. no. well, let me ask you a question. All y'all had your hands up, pull back up again. How many of y'all are driving today? Yes. Y'all, 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 did you catch what I just said? You got your hands up, you're driving today. Yes, you tried to drive early. early. They told you no, no but you're driving yet. today. Because the answer was not, not yet. yet. Not yet. Grace was preserving you. And had you got behind the wheel of the car at that time, you would have died. Hello? Yeah. Because yeah. wow. you weren't ready to handle what came Protected us. Protected you. Grace protected you. Yes. Great shield is you. <laughs> so, when mama and daddy told you no, you had to humble yourself. Humble yourself. That's you right. the revelation. Because if you humble yourself, then the Bible said that Peter, like we read, if you humble yourself under the mighty hand of God, he will exalt you. Yes. Yeah. I asked you how many of you tried to drive early and you said me and they told you no but then now you can drive legally yeah. now you have the right to drive yes if God tells you no I don't know who this is for I'm quitting I don't know who this is for but if God tells you no please listen to the no because he could be saving your life yeah. You might have tried to marry that joke, oh. God told you no. <laughs> Brother, you were ready to go by the ring. Uh, and God told you no. No. Come on. <laughs> How did I receive that grace wow. that protected me? Now watch this. They might not have been a serial killer. They might not have been. But maybe they were abusive. Maybe not even physically abusive. Maybe they were emotionally abusive. And God was saving you. Thank you, Lord. Oh. But how did you receive that grace? You had to. Oh, Lord, Lord. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. But we already got the invitation printed. Oh, but you said. I'm already wearing the ring. Uh -huh. oh, Lord. Lord. I pray today, I'm done. I pray today that something I said encouraged your heart. Yes, yes. Praise God. If, I hope it talks you something. Yes. In all of my excitement, I don't want you to just walk out of here excited. That's right. I want you to walk out of here empowered by the grace of God. I feel yeah. an anointing in this room. Thank you, Lord. Yes. I feel the anointing of the Holy Spirit in this room. Yes. His presence is here. That's right. If you don't mind, just take about 30 seconds and lift your hands and thank you for his grace. Oh, thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Oh, Lord, teach me to humble myself. Come on, let me let go, Lord. Don't let nothing bother us, sister. Thank you for the time. Thank you for bringing us here across the water. You don't just praise him for the yes. Yes. I can't hear you talking. Glory, glory. Praise him for the yes.
Another thing, when you want daddy's hand, 